This seems like a good time to explain to everyone how plants, well, specifically cannabis sativa, reacts to withholding nitrogen and how that affects THCA and cannabinoid production. Because in my comments section, I'm seeing things like yellow plant, yellow plant, yellow plant. It's like, okay, okay. I will explain it to you, little buddies. We won't hold out on you. Our tips, our tricks are free for you. For you, little buddy. Check this out. Play the clip. Let's get it, buddies. Alrighty, so I wanted to look at this and talk about three topics. Topic number one will be optimizing nitrogen. Topic two will be phosphorus. And three, I wanted to touch on bigger roots and bigger fruits, some bro, bro science facts. Um, in this study, they're optimizing nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium for soilless production of cannabis sativa in the flowering stage using a response service analysis. It's not important, really, what they're talking about. I will explain the important parts because there's going to be a lot of science jargon. Uh As far as what they did was they tested these cannabis plants with different PPMs. You can just look at MGL to the negative first as uh, PPM. That's I'm going to call that PPM for now on. From now on, this doesn't say MGL to the negative first. It's going to say PPM in my brain. So 70, 120, 80, 25, 290 parts per million for the N, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 for P, 60 to 340 in K. Um, they also found that 190 is about the perfect parts per million for nitrogen and around 60 is the perfect parts per million for phosphorus. And this is in flower, guys. Okay. Remember, this is in flower, which is really interesting, isn't it? I'll, we'll bring that up in a second. So first, let's get to a part where we can see... Hey, there we are. Boop. One quick thing to mention about nitrogen levels. So by adjusting the nitrogen levels higher and lower, they're able to see that anything in the 160 parts per million range gave you optimal amounts of yield without harming cannabinoid production too much. But if you're willing to sacrifice yield, if you're willing to make that sacrifice, you can increase THCA and CBD concentrations by up to 20 or 30%. So a plant that had a full diet lost 30 to 20% lower concentrations of THC and CBDA. Yield isn't everything. I'd rather have a gram of Primo than a quarter of good. That's just how I am, personally. Uh, so, sorry, I had to get on a rant because I've been seeing too many. This plant is yellow. Yep. In the context of yield is, again, important when analyzing the difference in cannabinoid TH content as THC con concentrations drop by 20% in the highest fertilizer rate. So I want you guys to look at that again. Keep in mind, guys, if your plant is dark dark green it's got those shiny curly leaves and people are telling you nitrogen toxicity nitrogen toxicity that's because your plant has nitrogen toxicity that's because your plant's going to produce less thc all you're doing is growing more leaves you don't want more leaves i'm sorry i'm getting a little ranty about this but it's it's really it's been driving me wild seeing the people who comment and the people who think they know what's best for everyone it's i think how you grow for you is the best for you i'm growing my way because i'm willing to sacrifice yield for quality the most important thing out of everything when i grow is quality so that's why if you over fertilize your plants highest fertilizer rate you will drop your thc concentration by 20 percent. that's that's not great dogs that's not great
But I think other than that, I want to talk about one last thing was uh, Bigger Roots, Bigger Fruits. This I think they touched on it in this. With only one little graph, you can see Bigger Roots. The bigger the roots, the more they weighed, the bigger the fruits in general. So that si bro science is definitely proven. You guys are right. The bigger the fruit, the roots, the bigger the fruits. That is without a doubt. Other than that, that stuff is not as important. None of that is as important. I'll come back with another one of these that will touch on um, some foliar symptomology. And I think I have one that does tissue testing with more information. This one only had like a few topics that we wanted to touch on. So we'll see you next time. I'm out you homies. So phosphorus nutrition has long been a focus in cannabis cultivation. Growers often supply plants with relatively high pea concentrations, up to 200 parts per million, during the flowering stage based on beliefs that high pea promotes flower development. Um, however, there's little evidence to support this practice. A recent study found that cannabis plants in vegetative stage supplied with 100 parts per million performed similar to those who only had 30 parts per million. So big, 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 big thing. Um, I might have to do another, another video. That's another science jargon video. It's a recent one. It's going to be on foliar symptomology. And then I have another one for, uh, flip. I can't remember the name of the study. We'll go back to it whenever I get to it. We'll go back to it whenever I get to it. Yep, it's not important now. But the most important thing is um, in farming and horticulture, we often pollute the planet using excessive pee, which is why we should probably not over-fertilize our plants with phosphorus because all these studies are suggesting less is more when it comes to phosphorus. Uh, we see a lot of flowering nutrients with 0, 12, 12, 0, 20, 20, like... These high numbers for phosphorus is absolutely unnecessary for cannabis specifically. This is different for every single plant. Like let's say you have flowering tomatoes or flowering sunflowers. You might need different ratios for each one. But for cannabis specifically, 100 parts per million is plenty. And 30 is generally good enough, I would say. Uh, as far as that goes, that's the most important one. So we touched on phosphorus all right homies hopefully that wasn't too boring and too dry and too sciencey for everyone and if it was at least you learned something I, I try to keep it within like five six minutes like i just touched on every subject didn't go too deep into it um i was thinking about doing longer in-depth videos on this but i didn't want to lose everybody's attention so at least we touched on the topics and we hopefully learned something and i changed your mind maybe I'll see you next time. I'm Budgie Buds.